Welcome back to a special edition of Crossroads Cafe. I'm Sophia Reeves. The 24th episode of our series emphasized the richness that cultural differences and traditions can bring to communities. And that's certainly the case in Montgomery County. As the most recent U.S. Census has shown, the population of Montgomery County is more diverse than ever before, with people from all over the world coming here to live. But the county's increasing diversity also presents challenges. The biggest one being, how do we help our county's newest residents adapt to life in the United States? And that's the focus of today's show. Here's the first part of my report. Because the difference between cultures was a major theme of today's show, it got me wondering what types of programs Montgomery County has to address this issue. And it turns out the county has lots of programs that help people thrive in their new culture here. One outstanding example is the Civics and Citizenship Program run by Liberty's Promise, a nonprofit organization working in partnership with Montgomery County. And I got a chance to talk with Austin Morris, a program officer who helps run the program in the county. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. What was the motivation for starting the Civics and Citizenship Program in Montgomery County? Well, the D.C. metro area is home to more than one million uh, foreign-born residents, and Montgomery County in particular has about 30 percent uh, foreign-born resident population, which is well above the national average of around 13 percent, and so that's why we went to Montgomery County. What are the goals and objectives of the program? The goals of civic, civics and citizenship is for participants to learn to increase their civic knowledge and civic engagement, but also to learn about how to become successful here in the U.S. What methods do you use to meet your goals and objectives? We have a pretest and a post-test, which are both the same exact form for civic knowledge and civic engagement. So for civic knowledge, we ask them questions such as, who's your congressman? Do you know what our resume is? Where can you get help finding English classes? Things like that. So we, it's 20 questions, and we ask them that in the beginning of the program and the end, and so we can judge what they've learned individually. Same thing goes for the civic engagement survey, which asks questions more about their involvement in the community, such as how many times have you volunteered. Could you detail some of the activities the program features? Civics and Citizenship is sort of broken down um, into three different sections. So we start, start off the program uh, focusing about their local community. So they learn about um, sort of how to get involved. So we have guest speakers, we run programs ourselves, and so we have, for example, a student service learning panel where we bring in either the uh, student service learner coordinator from their school to come and talk to them about exactly what they have to do to graduate and how many hours they need because these students are coming into Montgomery County Public Schools at different years because of their education and their immigrant background. And we also bring in different nonprofit organizations in the area that are looking for students to help volunteer such as Shepherd's Table, um, American Cancer Society, uh, things like that that they can actually go to, Washington Adventist Hospital, they can sign up for that day and go out to and volunteer and get their service requirements done. So that's one example of how we get them involved in the local community. Another way is we take them directly out to the community. So we take them to their fire station, their police station, they meet police officers because, you know, in some countries they're coming from, the police are the bad people. But we're showing them that police are here to help you to serve and protect their community and that they should be able to go to them for help if they need that. So we bring them out into the community as well as bring people to them. We also, um, the focus of civics and citizenship is to get them prepared for their future. And so we've started a little bit of a college component, college access component. And for example, we have different scholarship representatives come in to our programs and talk to the students about scholarships that are really relevant to them. For example, the Esperanza Fund, which just funds uh, scholars that are immigrants in the DC metro area, or um, Herb Block Scholarship, which funds from a, a local community colleges. So different sorts of things to get them thinking about their future. We brought AmeriCorps in for the first time this year, for example, for students who are not necessarily ready to go to college right after high school. We also have another component uh, towards the end of our program, which is more of a job skills component of the program, where they do resume workshops and a little bit about cover letters um, and getting them prepared to maybe interview for a summer job or an internship and things like that. So it's pretty diverse. We get the students get to meet sometimes their congressmen a congresswoman, they take them down to D.C. to visit them. They're county council members in Montgomery County. We've had come visit the classes, which is always really exciting for them. Can you tell us a little about how the program works? How often does it meet? Where does it meet? And who teaches or facilitates the sessions? Sure. In Montgomery County, we're located in three high schools, which are Wheaton High School, John F. Kennedy High School, and Gaithersburg High School. 
And also we, we run a downtown Silver Spring program, which mainly draws students from Montgomery Blair and Northwood High Schools. The program is run twice per year, both in the fall and spring. We meet uh, twice a week for each session for about 10 weeks, so it's about 30 hours. We, we meet for an hour and a half each time. How do students get into the program? How many students are involved and what is their age range? Uh, the youth we serve are 15 to 21 and they get involved in the program mainly by word of mouth by students that have done the program in the past but also program officers go, in, program officers go directly into the ESOL classes level 3 through 5 to um, advertise for the program right before it starts, about a week before. And generally per session we say we get about 15 to 30 students in each program. Um, this past fall I averaged 25 new students and then we also have past participants who come back and participate in the program as well. Do you have any success stories you'd like to share with us? Sure, definitely. Um, there's one young man that comes to mind who I met in the fall of 2009 who was a senior at Wheaton High School who immigrated from Nicaragua a few years back and he wasn't doing poorly in school but he was just sort of sketching by, you know, he's going to graduate. He was the oldest male in his family in the U.S. so he sort of had this huge responsibility to provide for his younger siblings as well as his mother who couldn't find any work. So I've had a lot of in individual conversations with him and talking about his plans for after high school. And he informed me, oh, I'm just going to get a job, I'll go in the automotive field, things like that. And not that, that there's anything wrong with that, but I had conversations with him just about the U.S. and talking about how the direct correlation between the level of education and types of jobs and opportunities you can get in the future. And just after a few conversations with him, um, he could see that he was just not really he didn't have a lot of self-worth and didn't think that he could do it. Um, but I sat down and talked to him more about, you know, just maybe going to Montgomery College, start, starting off like that and transferring to a four-year if he wanted to, or he could still go into automotive fields by going to Montgomery College and getting an associate's degree. And But he obviously had the lack of money opportunity. So what I did is I connected him with the Herb Box Scholarship, which he learned about through our after-school program. And I sat down and helped him fill out the application and it turns out that he won the application or he won the scholarship to attend Montgomery College for free because it's a last dollar scholarship. So it was really exciting for us. We're very proud of him for being able to achieve that with just a little bit of help and direction. And so he's actually starting his first semester this spring at Montgomery College. And we're really proud of him. Why do you think it's so important for young immigrants to learn about how government works and to understand the benefits of becoming involved in the civic and political process? Sure, as I mentioned before, we serve youth from 83 different countries. So they're coming from countries that maybe that didn't have democracies or things like that. They, they weren't able to speak up and be a part of their community in that regard. So we just think it's really important for them to understand their new community here in the U.S. and how they can participate. So a lot of the youth we work with are under 18 though, and so and maybe they're not here legally in the U.S. We don't ask that in the after school program. We just take the policy of the schools. And so we want to give them a way for them to feel like they can still belong and have a voice. And so, for example, in the after school program this past fall, I had Action in Montgomery come in and talk to students about how they can get involved politically um, through community organizing. Even if they don't have the right to vote, they can still have a voice in this community. So we think that's really important for them to understand. But also, if they are one day going to become citizens and to express the importance of voting or participating in the census, which we, we, we did a lot of talking about last spring before it went out so they can tell their parents it's safe, um, it's really going to be helpful for social services that they can provide if they participate in things like the census. And also be a voice for other family members that are maybe here that are not here legally or won't vote and be a voice for them. So we think it's really important for them to understand where they are now and how they can become politically and socially involved. If there was just one thing you'd like the community to know and understand about your program, what would that be? I think it would be something very simple that we help America's newest um, residents or Montgomery County's newest residents learn about their community and learn how to become involved. Are there any other programs that Liberty Promise offers in Montgomery County? Yes, in addition to our civics and citizenship after school program, we also run an, um, an internship pro program called Opportunities Plus, where our young immigrants get to partake in an eight week long internship, generally in the summertime, in a field they're interested in. We, ha we have partner host organizations in government and nonprofit fields that um, young people get to do their internships in, so they get to gain workplace experience and 
get exposed to fields that they necessarily would not have been exposed to. And we provide an allowance for these students because they're all low income, so they don't have to pay out of pocket to get to their internship site. As we just heard in my interview with Austin Morris, the motivation for starting the Civics and Citizenship program was that 30% of Montgomery County's population is foreign born, and that's well above the national average. And the goal of their program is to help increase the civic knowledge of foreign born high school students and to encourage their engagement in the community. The Civics and Citizenship program runs in three Montgomery County high schools. They meet twice a week after school, and recently I had a chance to attend one of the sessions at Wheaton High School. About 25 to 30 enthusiastic students attended the meeting, and to get things rolling, a facilitator conducted a civics quiz game. The students broke down into teams to come up with the answers. Um, the U.S. has the largest economy in the world. The U.S. has the largest economy in the world. And then the facilitator went over the correct answers. Workers get a 10 minute break for every four hours they work. That's true. But considering that you're under 18, you get a half hour break for every five hours you work. After the game, they learned about an upcoming job fair for high school students. OK, so this Saturday, there's a job fair for you, 16 to 21 years old, in downtown Silver Spring at the new Civic Building. Do you guys know where that is? No. Where the building? How about the movie theater? Yeah. 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 Oh, street. Uh, right across the street from the, the one in downtown Silver Spring at Ellsworth. Oh, yeah. yeah. That one? Oh, so there's a youth job fair this weekend. Um, I think it's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So I really suggest you guys go and check it out if you're looking for a job this summer. And then came two presentations. The first was from City Year, a nationwide volunteer organization for high school graduates. City Year volunteers commit to a year of public service and in return get a financial award to use toward a college education. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. How are y'all doing? Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's good to hear. Um, so I'll introduce myself. So my name is Daryl Dupuy. I'm 22 years old from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, this is my second year with City Year. Um, last year I served on our HIV prevention team, so I went to different high schools and middle schools and taught about HIV. And I'm Salam Kidani, I'm 23 years old. Um, I'm originally from Houston, Texas, and I serve, this is my first year of City Year, and I serve at Stan Elementary in Southeast DC. Cool. So we're gonna teach you guys a little bit about City Year. As you see, it says, are you ready to change the world? And we believe through <laughs> service, um, youth like us and you guys are able to change the world. So let's get into it. All right, All right. so what is City Year? City Year is a national nonprofit organization where we bring together 17 and 24 year olds for a year of full-time service. So that's serving as tutors, mentors, and role models to youth in the communities that we serve in. Next, um, so the students heard from a representative from Year Up. It's a program that intensively trains students for careers, provides internships, and also helps them earn college credits. How many of you have ever heard of Year Up? No one. Oh. Some people probably were here the last time I was here, so this information may sound very redundant to some of you and very new um, to some of you. Well, Year Up is exactly what it sounds like. Um, it is a one-year job readiness program, and it's designed to train young adults between the ages of 18 to 24 for not just a job, but a career in the corporate world. Our site in particular, which is called the National Capital Region DC site, we're physically located in Arlington, Virginia. Our focus is information technology, and I know while you were playing the game, um, I overheard uh, someone say that that particular field is growing, and it is continuing um, to grow in the near future. So if that's something you're interested in, then Europe is definitely the place for you. Well, how does Europe actually work? Well, we train young adults um, for five and a half months of in-class training, coupled with six months of on-the-job training. It is a full-time program from 8.30 to 3.30, Monday through Friday, and Wednesdays is always a half day from 8.30 to 11.30 for the first five and a half months of the program. So when students go to the site there in Arlington, Virginia, in class training, they learn everything that they need to know in order to survive in the corporate setting. So, of course so that was a fairly typical meeting of the Civics and Citizenship Program. Twice each week, this is the kind of experience and information the students receive. They want to help students in need of information, the students who are the county's newest residents. 
And with the help of this program, students who are new to this country can learn about the democracy they live in and become a more active member of the community. Another great program offered in the county to help students adapt to their new culture is the ESOL Adventure Club. This program is run by the Y in partnership with the Montgomery County government and the school system. And recently, I had a chance to sit down with the program's coordinator, Barbara Pulgar. When did the program start and how did the Y get involved? Okay, uh, the program uh, was part of a collaboration with Springbrook High School um, and the Y. And um, they, the purpose was um, getting kids uh, to an activity after school where um, those hours are the hours that studies have shown the kids get into the most trouble. And so we targeted at-risk girls and the ESOL students because those were the two um, populations that had not been served in the past. What was the motivation for starting the adventure group? The motivation was to have a um, safe place for newcomer students to have um, so that they could talk about the acculturation process um, and just becoming a part of their school and of their community because uh, those are the protective factors that we want to increase. We want them to feel a part of their community and part of this, their school so that they are not feeling, they're, they are not at risk for, you know, stuff like crime or gang involvement or um, early pregnancy or dropout. What are the goals and objectives of the program? The goals are for the students to be able to, um, be able to process through their acculturation um, to be to have to get a new support with peers and with leaders um, and to feel part of their school but we also do some psychoeducational pieces on substance abuse teen dating violence um, healthy relationships um, and then on, in addition the newcomer students don't uh, have their community service hours that they need to graduate so we also provide that once a month some type of community service activity where they're out in the community and they're having, uh, they're getting those SSL hours so they can graduate because ultimately we want the students to graduate. ESOL students are more at risk of not completing high school because of many factors. How do you go about meeting your goals and objectives? Well, we have weekly meetings at school. Um, once a month we have uh, field trips, either outdoor um, adventure field trips Oh, using our therapeutic outdoor adventure programs, the, the Horizon program, or we take them to Washington, D.C. to ice skate. You know, that's something that maybe some kids have been here for a while, but they've never been to D.C. Um, so we, we do that, and some kids come from the islands, and so they've never been ice skating, so we take them ice skating, so they experience those new things. Um, and uh, we... We also um, plan our sessions around the goals that we want to meet. Could you detail some of the activities the program features? Well, we, again, we, we do the therapeutic outdoor adventure stuff, so we might take them zip lining or high rope um, uh, climbing, or um, we do outdoor rock climbing, hiking. So those are, that's the, those are some of the highlighted activities. Um, we also take them camping. Right now we're raising money to take them camping um, uh, to Assateague Island. We went last year, but we could only raise enough for one, one night of camping. And this year we're, our goal is to raise for two nights of camping. So, you know, that's also a great experience for the kids. Tell us a little about how the program works. How often does it meet, where it meets, and who teaches or facilitates the program? Myself and a, and a co-leader. Um, this I've had different co-leaders each year but I've kind of been the constant person I think consistency for the kids is really important as we have some members that have been in the club since their freshman year to their senior year and then they've graduated and we meet every Tuesday every Wednesday after school 2:30 to 4 unless we have a field trip um, all our field trips have to be either after school or during a non school day because the, again the goal is to keep them off the streets when there's no school. 
How do the students get into the program? How many students are involved and what is their age range? For this year, we have 20 students registered, which means that they've come at least two times to group. Um, they hear about it. In, in the beginning, it was really hard. We had to do outreach in the classroom and the school has been very open to having us do that. Um, and then once we started, it's word of mouth. It's kind of like in any of our community, our immigrant communities, is once you hear that something's good, then it spreads in the community and the same thing happens at the school. So um, as new students arrive, because ESOL students come at any time of the year, new students, and so they get brought into group and um, we feel that's where the best successes come when there's a, new, a newcomer student that's brought by an older student and they're able to complete the, the program. Do you have any success stories from the program that you would like to share with us? I think a big success has been seeing the kids who have been in group graduate high school. You know, I've seen kids who have no um, knowledge of English come to group and I see them really learn the language and excel in school and, and then graduate. And I think those have been the success stories. Last year we had um, seven students graduate um, from, from high school and this year we have um, six seniors as well and they keep coming to group and they um, and then once they graduate we have had them come in as volunteers. Also having students, um, in the beginning we had um, problems with the African students and the Latino students having a lot of conflict um, and now our group is very mixed and we have students from um, all over Africa and all over Latin America and they're all working together, they're on soccer teams together um, and I think had it not been for the group that those unions wouldn't have happened so I think it, it brings a lot of, um, there's a lot of good qualities that come with being part of the group. How vital do you think programs like yours are in helping refugees, immigrants, and repatriated persons settle into our area and make an adjustment to the traditions, values, and lifestyles of the adopted country. Well, I think it's really important. I think the newcomer population, especially the teenage population, are, are overlooked and um, you know, th thankfully we had been we have been funded by the Col Montgomery County Collaboration County for the last five years. But as as you know, the budget the county's budget gets cut, we um, see that we're in danger of maybe not continuing this program. But um, it has been vital to these students. They, um, you know, otherwise might not never be in an after school program. Um, and you know what happens is there's an in increase in um, gang involvement in um, teenage pregnancy in dropout so I think if we nurture these teenagers the newcomer teenagers um, it's really helpful um, because it's a little bit different than when a child is born here and you try to do the intervention when they're in elementary school and how that works best when somebody is a newcomer to the country it's like you know it's the beginning and so if you if you get them when if you get the kids and you give provide them services when they're first arrived then um, the outcomes are a lot better so um, I think it's extremely important and you know our hope is that we are able to continue at Springbrook we you know if there were money we would be at every of our every one of our high schools because we service um, all, all the high schools in this down county area and a couple in Bethesda but it's just really hard to do without funding. If there was just one thing you'd like the community to know and understand about your program what would it be? One thing that I would like the community to know about um, the ESOL Adventure Club at Springbrook High School is that the students have really made it their own, that given the opportunity they can excel, um, you know, uh, and, and work together, irregardless of where they're coming from and their language barriers and their cultural barriers, they can work together and, um, and complete their goals and um, learn about each other's culture and just that uh, you know they need a, a chance to do that um, so the the club is is a space where they have that chance to
to do that. And it's part of our goal at the Y, the social responsibility goal, um, that we uh, that we include everybody, including the newcomer kids. So that's a look at the ESOL Adventure Club, a partnership between the Y and Montgomery County Schools. This program serves students from Springbrook High School. And the day I visited, I got a chance to talk with a few of the students in the club. What do you like most about the program? What I like most about the program is that we get to go to a lot of field trips that we organize, and at the same time, we exercising. One of the parts that I like the most about this program is that when you get to the school from another country, um, you don't get to socialize when there are many people because you don't know anybody, you don't even know the language. So I really enjoy being in this program because it helped me to meet friends, to get to know some other people, maybe from my own country or from another country. So it's a, it's a great program to those people that feel like they, they, don't, they don't have that many friends or maybe they feel like uh, apart from society. And it's a good way to get involved. I love this program. It's it, it's been giving me so much since I joined it. I just couldn't see myself going through high school without this program. What got you into the program in the first place? In the first place, I joined the program because I was really depressed and I didn't feel like talking to anyone. I didn't really know the language. So when I first heard about the program that it was for ESOL students and there were people that was going to talk in Spanish, I I got excited about it and I and I joined it and since then I've been in the program and it's it, it helped me a lot. What have you learned from the program? That's a really hard question cuz we learn a lot of different things in this program that are really important. But uh, I would say that the most important one is that never to judge a people by their looks cuz those people might be your friend next year, you never know. The most important thing that I learned is how to be a good citizen, like to always give a, give a hand to the ones that need help. Um, I learned a lot of values, like to respect everybody, to the tolerance that you have to have from other people from another country. You have to see how they have different point of view as you as you have different point of view or then or from different kind of teams or kind of stuff you know. I've learned in this program that like life is it's like life is hard but you, there's gonna, always going to be people around you to help you and certainly there were people around me all the time to help me. And like Miss Barbara or friends, that people I met in, in this program that helped me through like my three years in high school. And I'm really, really happy about that. How do you like your leader, Barbara? I really like it because she's really friendly and she's bilingual, so I speak Spanish and most of us speak Spanish, so if we don't know how to say a word or something, we can talk to her in Spanish, and she will help us with our English or something. And she's really friendly, and I love her. <laughs> well, Miss Barbara is like, like she, she's like a role model for me because, well, first of all, she's pretty smart. Uh, she helps. She helps me a lot. Like give me courage to do stuff. And also, um, she's like, she comes with these different ideas and how to do fun activities and everything that we are doing in the, the group is because of her. Uh, Miss Barbara is an amazing person. Uh, she's understandable. She helps you. She became like my mentor. And I, I know I can talk to her at any moment. I know I can tell her anything, and she, she helped me a lot, a lot. 
It's obvious the students in ESOL Adventure Club are getting a lot out of it. This program provides a positive after-school experience and a place where they can talk about their new culture, learn how to become a part of the community, and also feel a part of their school. It's also a place where students can get support, advice, and friendship from their peers and from community leaders. Well, we're just about out of time, so if you'd like more information on Liberty's Promise and the Civics and Citizenship Program in Montgomery County, you can visit www.libertyspromise.org or you can call 703-549-9950. And if you'd like more information on the ESOL Adventure Club, visit www.ymcadc.org or call 301-593-1160. And these two programs are just two of the many programs offered in Montgomery County to help newcomers adapt to their new culture. If you'd like to discover other programs the county offers for school-age kids and adults, one good source of information is the Info Montgomery website. You can visit them at www.infomontgomery.org. I'm Sophia Reeves, and thanks for watching Crossroads Cafe.